A fiery horse with the speed of light, cloud of dust, and a haughty high of silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, at the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Cowboy tricks, he can rope the steer because he knows he's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. He's feeling his Cheerios, Cheerios, Cheerios. Yes, it's a fact. Cheerios does give you real go power. You see, Cheerios is made from oats, and every delicious spoonful of Cheerios and milk is real muscle building food. Each spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. Yes, the good things in a Cheerios breakfast do good things for your body. Help you have healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones and muscles. And Cheerios is so much fun to eat with its distinctive O shape and its wonderful toasted oat flavor. So tomorrow morning and every morning, start the day right with a Cheerios breakfast. Then you'll hear people say, He's stealing his Cheerios. The Civil War had just ended, and veterans of both armies were heading for their homes when a tall, lean man named Joe Coffin entered the Silver Eagle Cafe in Redwood City and strode to a corner table. The cafe was crowded with Union soldiers, and Joe was afraid of being recognized as a deserter. But army desertion was the least of his crimes. During the war years, he had led a gang of ruthless thieves and killers in raids on towns and settlements in the border states of Missouri and Kentucky. Now the war was over, and Joe wanted to make new plans. He was thinking about the future when a swarthy-skinned member of his gang joined him. Sit down, Rocco. What's eating you? Uh, take a look at this newspaper. I bought it in Belleville. Yeah, let's see it. It's all there, the whole story. Starting with the headline, Joe Coffin's Raiders Captured by the Lone Ranger. The Lone Ranger? Yes, go on, read what it says. While they await sentence, the Lone Ranger is pursuing the remaining members of the gang. A killer named Rocco and Joe Coffin himself. There's a lot more on the inside page. Yeah, that's right enough. Look, a gunslinger pal of mine followed me from Belleville. He said the masked man, his ancient pal, picked up the trail. He's after me right now. Well, if he's following you, he'll come here and find me. I won't find either one of us. We hit the trail pronto. Yeah, we'll have to go into hiding. Who would hide us? Frisco Benedict in front of his crick. That's shyster. He split us up before when the law got close. He'll do it now. It'll be better if we split up. The masked man can't follow two of us at once. Yes, all right. Now meet you at Benedict's office in front of his crick. But see that you lose the masked man and his engine, pal, before you get there. Rocco traveled fast, allowing neither himself nor his horse time to rest. Yeah. But in spite of his best efforts, he could not lose his pursuers. The day after he left Redwood City, he caught sight of two horsemen in the distance. Oh, 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 Sadie. Shading his eyes against the bright noonday sun, he saw that one of the riders was Matt. The other was an Indian. Get up. Get up. He spurred his horse frantically, but his pursuers kept gaining on him until finally they were within shooting range. Snatching his gun, he turned in the saddle and fired. emptied his weapon, but it was impossible to shoot accurately from the back of a hard-running horse. The masked man and the Indian grew closer. Faster! Faster, you flea-bitten son of Satan! Faster, you hear me! Get up! 
He raked the flanks of his horse with cruel spurs in a desperate effort to escape, but it was no use. The exhausted animal could go no farther. Rocco knew he was trapped, grabbing cartridges from his belt. The frenzied raider was trying to reload his empty gun when the Lone Ranger shouted, Put on that gun! Put it on man! Not before I drop you! You have a chance! I kill you! You asked for that, Rocco! You broke my arm! Easy, Teddy Big All right, now just go. Yeah, all right. Why did you kill me? You had the chance. I'll let the law take care of that. So you'll turn me in. That's right. But they'll hang me. You'll get what you deserve. See if he has any other weapons, Toto. Uh, speak, Pappy. Uh, where well, are we going now? To the nearest United States Marshal. He'll see that you go back to stand trial with your pals. Oh, but I'll be sentenced to hang. Folks in these parts hate mortar raiders worse than horse thieves. Why shouldn't they hate you? Well, their men were away fighting. You and your pals found it easy to plunder homes. Defended by old men, women, and children. Uh, I didn't ask for a sermon. You asked for a chance to escape the gallows. No, I'd give anything to escape hanging. Oh? Would you be willing to help the law? How? Tell me where to find Joe Coffin. You want me to turn squealer? That's one way to win leniency. But turning Joe in... You is... might be sentenced to life imprisonment if you talk. But whether you talk or not, Todd and I'll find Joe Coffin, just as we found you and your pals. Thanks, Toto. Get the saddle, Rocco. Yeah. Maybe I don't know where to find Joe. He's a big He's got easy, I'll find him. Yes, I think maybe you will. All right, I talk, mister. I might as well. But nothing to lose and a lot to gain. Joe's going to Frisco Benedict's office in Furnace Creek. All right. Head for Belleville. Get him. Get him up. Lone Ranger and Toto turned their prisoner over to the marshal in Belleville. Then they started for Furnace Creek. They traveled steadily for two days. After darkness fell on the evening of the second day, they drew rein in a place of concealment off the trail to eat a meal. As they sat beside their small campfire, they heard the hoofbeats of an approaching horse. Toto, we may have a guest. Oh, oh boy. Hi there. Hello, soldier. I was riding along the trail when I saw your campfire. Will you uh, share our meal? Uh, I hope you'd ask me, mister. I'm mighty hungry. And sit down and join us. Thanks. Uh, uh, downright nice of you. My name's Tom Pinder. Uh, I reckon if you wanted to be known, you, you wouldn't wear a mask. That's right, Tom. But the mask doesn't mean I'm an outlaw. Well, I don't care what it means. You offered me a meal, and I'm grateful. Oh, uh, here. Your food, Tom. Oh, thanks, Injun. Mm. <laughs> Tastes mighty good. Well, you plenty, so feel free to eat your fill. Oh, well, that's reckless talk, mister. I've been hungry ever since I joined the Army. I could eat my way through a whole store full of food. Are you on your way home? Yeah. I'm, I'm going back to my pa's place in Furnace Creek. Have you uh, always lived there? Yeah. If you're wondering why I'm wearing a gray uniform instead of a blue... The answer is that my pa and I both sympathize with the South. You needn't explain your sympathies, Tom. The war split a lot of families. <laughs> split ours, all right. My pa's brother was a strong union man. Does he live in Furnace Creek? Yeah. He was the one who wrote and told me about Paul's death six months ago. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, thanks. Well, maybe it's just as well Pa didn't live long enough to know how the war ended. The Lone Ranger refilled Tom's plate while Tonto fed the young soldier's horse. When Tom finally had enough to eat, he helped the masked man and Tonto clean and pack the cooking gear, then rode away. By using shortcuts, he reached Furnace Creek some time ahead of the masked man and Tonto. As the Lone Ranger and his Indian friend approached the small community, the masked man said... When we reach town, I'll look for the sheriff's office, Tonto. I'll need his cooperation to get Joe Coffin. It's not good if someone in town see masks. I'll pull my hat brim low over my eyes. In the dark, the mask may not be noticed. Uh -huh. And what me do? Watch Frisco Benedict's office. I want to know whether or not Joe Coffin has reached town. Uh, me savvy. Come on, come on. Curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Gee, man, Jimmy is eight years old.
gold. He is strong and he is bold. He can capture outlaws cause he knows. He's got gold power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got gold power. There he goes. He's feeling his Cheerios. 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 You bet, Cheerios, the oat cereal that needs no cooking. Every delicious spoonful of Cheerios and milk is real muscle-building food. Each spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. Yes, the good things in a Cheerios breakfast do good things for your body. Help you have healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones, and muscles. And besides giving you go power, Cheerios is downright wonderful tasting. That toasted oat flavor is really something. And when you add milk and your favorite fruit, say some sliced bananas, you're in for a delicious breakfast treat. Get the whole family off to a good start every morning with Cheerios. Then you'll hear people say, He's feeling his Cheerios. Now to continue. Joe Coffin had just reached Frisco Benedict's office. As he closed the door behind him, a small, thin-faced lawyer stared in dismay at the notorious raider. What? Joe! Howdy, Frisco. Is Rocco here yet? I haven't seen Rocco for over a year. I hoped I'd never see you again. I'm in trouble. I heard how the Lone Ranger captured your gang. He'll get you, too. And I'm not going to jail for hiding you. You'll go to jail if you don't hide me. Uh, why? That's why you'll hang. No, no. I'll see if the law finds out you're wanted for murder in the East. You've held that murder app over my head for years. I wouldn't have to stay here if I had cash enough to bribe my way across the If I had that much money, I'd give it to you just to be rid of you. Tell me who has the cash and I'll get it. Hey, wait. I know where you might get money. Lots of it. Yeah, where? Sam Pinner was worth a fucking... He died about six months ago and left his money to his son, Tom. Tom's still in the army. What about the money? Sam buried it in the cellar of his house. How do you know? I was his lawyer. I drew up his will, and uh, I have a letter in my safe for Tom. The letter was sealed, but I... I still open. It tells Tom where to find the money. How come you didn't go after it yourself? I've gone straight... Besides, Sam Pinder was Sheriff Pinder's brother. Why didn't Sam ask the sheriff to take care of his cash? He and the sheriff stopped talking to each other when the South left the Union. But the sheriff knows about Sam's buried money. And he likewise knows I had the letter for Tom. After Sam died, the sheriff told me that if anything happened to the money, he'd come after me. Sounds like the sheriff doesn't trust you. <clears throat> Joe, oh. after you on your way out of town... I'll tell the chef you broke up in my safe and found the letter. I'll say you went to Pinner's place and took the cash. Even though he suspects me, he can't jail me without proof. Yeah, you'll have the money, and I'll be in the clear. Quiet down, Frisco. Huh? Someone's outside the back door. Oh, you're hearing things. No one would be prowling around my place. Yeah, I'll open the door. You there. Get your hands up. It's an Indian. I told you I heard someone out here. Step inside, engine. You make mistakes. Just keep your hands up. That's it. Look out, Joe. He's going for a gun. Oh, you don't, engine. You knocked him out, Joe. Nobody's head's harder than a gun barrel. Take his guns while he's unconscious. All right. But who is he? I think his name's Tonto. Tonto? Yeah, the sidekick of the Lone Ranger. How do you know? I told you the mask man was after me. The engine must have followed me here. If that's true, the Lone Ranger's likely to come here. Well, you'll not find me. You bet he won't. Now, get out. No, no, you're coming with me. We'll take the Indian with us to Pinder's place. But you'll have to kill him. And I don't want to get mixed up in another murder. We'll fix it so his body's never found. Now, come on. We've got to move fast to stay ahead of that mask, man. Meanwhile, the Lone Ranger found Tom Pinder in Sheriff Pinder's office. The ex-soldier introduced the masked man to his uncle as a friend. Then he said, Oh, why didn't you and Tano say you were heading for Pinner's Creek? I could have shown you a shortcut. If I'd known you were related to the sheriff, I'd have taken you into my confidence, Tom. Well, what's your business with me, mister? Sheriff, I'm looking for a joke, Coffin. <laughs> so a lot of other fellas. Madam's a little re- Hmm. Yes, I heard that the Lone Ranger's looking for Joe Coffin, and for a critter named Rocco. Uh, Rocco's in jail in Belleville. Joe Coffin's the only one of the gang left. I want to take him back to Belleville to face trial with the rest of his raiders. Uh-huh. What makes you think the skunk's around here? Rocco talked. 
He squealed on you, Coffin? He said Coffin planned to hide out with a man named Frisco Benedict. He might have been lying. Well, there's one way to find out. Yeah, let's go. The three men went to Frisco Benedict's darkened office. The door was unlocked. Well, come on, we'll go inside. All right. There's a lamp on the table. I'll let it. Go ahead. Benedict must have left you a short time ago. The lamp's still warm. Mm-hmm. Close the door, Tom. Right. Someone left a horse out there. Well, it sounds like Scout. Scout? My friend Hutto's paint. Where's Tyler? He was watching this office. Oh. Well, if your pal's outside, mister, he might be able to tell us which way Benedict went when he left here. Come on. We'll ask him questions. Very well, Sheriff. Out here. Tonto. Hmm. I reckon he's gone. If Benedict left here on foot, Tonto probably followed him. But he didn't leave on foot. Oh, what's that? There's the barn where he stables his horse and keeps a buckboard. The door is open and the place is empty. Yes, Scott. Where are you going, mister? Back to your office to get silver. Then I'll follow those wagon tracks, Sheriff. And I'll go with you. And so will I. Let's go. Come on, Scott. <laughs> Benedict grew rain in front of Sam Pinder's dark and deserted ranch house two miles from town. Then Coffin cut the ropes around Tonto's ankles. There. Now, Agent, get out of that wagon. Walk ahead of us. After forcing the lock on the front door, the three men entered the house. Frisco found a lamp in the living room and struck a match to light it. How do we get to the cellar, Frisco? Come on, I'll show you. Putting a gun on Tonto, Joe followed Frisco to the cellar. There, Frisco placed the lamp on the stairs. According to the instructions Sam left for Tom, the money's buried right here. Get a spade, we'll start digging. Upstairs. Nothing to hear. The place is deserted. It sounded like a door opening. I don't hear a thing. I'm going up and look around. Well, don't take the lamp. I'll lead it down here. There's a candle on the shelf. I'll use that. Don't waste any time up there, Frisco. Come back here and give me a hand with this digging job. I want to get the cash and clear out of this place. Frisco shielded the candle flame carefully as he made his way upstairs. He moved into the living room. Then suddenly... Stop right there. Why don't you make a sound, Frisco? I'll blow your head off. Sheriff, what's the idea? You'll find out. Take the candle from him, Tom. Right, Uncle Dan. You'd better stand still, Frisco. Even without the candle, enough moonlight shining through the windows to make you a perfect target. Now, now, wait a minute, Sheriff. Let me explain. You have plenty to explain. Listen. Come on, Tom. We'll see who's down there. I'm with you, mister. Moments later, the lone ranger and Tom listened at the top of the cellar stairs. They heard the sound of a spade thrown aside and Joe Coffin's exultant shout. Let's go! I found it! The cash box is over! That cash won't do you any good! Get your hands up, Joe! You! Look, mister, there's Tonto! Cut his ropes, Tom. Take that gag out of his mouth. Right. Keep your hands away from your holsters, Joe. You! You broke up my gang. You captured my boys. You're the last of the gang left. No, no, it's Rocco. He'll get you. Rocco told me where to find you. Rocco told you? Yes. He's in jail in Belleville. You'll see him there in a few days. Why, you... Don't finish that draw. I'm right, matching my speed. I'll do more than matching. Oh, my arm. You weak me. There, Tonto. Thanks, Tom. Thanks. Well, it's pretty good to get gang out of mouth. Are you all right, Toto? Me all right, Kimasabi. Joe Coffin, telling him Benedict, to come here to steal money. The sheriff's holding Benedict upstairs. Oh. Now that the fight's been taken out of Joe Coffin, we'll join them. Several hours later, mass 
Postman and Tonto were on their way to Belleville with Joe Coffin as their prisoner. Frisco Benedict was behind bars in Furnace Creek's jail when the sun rose, lighting the eastern sky. In his office in the jail, Sheriff Dan Pinder exclaimed, Hey, Tom, we should have brought that box of cash to town. With a lock on the ranch house door busted, anyone could go in and steal it. <laughs> that money's not worth stealing, Uncle Dan. Huh? That box is full of Confederate bonds and paper money. Are you sure? Paul wrote and told me he was converting most of his cash into Confederate money. Well, doggone it. Why didn't he tell me? Oh, he knew what you thought of the Confederacy. Oh, now, Tom. The war's over, Uncle Dan, and Paul's money is gone. But I've still got the ranch. I'll go to work to try to build it up again. <laughs> Just wait till Frisco Benedict hears that he and his pal were digging for Confederate cash. <laughs> I always figured that tallow face shyster was no good. But it took your mask, friend, to prove I was right. Say, uh, how'd you happen to meet the Lone Ranger, Tom? The Lone Ranger? You mean that mask? I right? knew who he was as soon as he said he was after Joe Coven. Benedict knew who he was, too. Well, how do you like that? Huh? I was sitting at his campfire, eating his food, and I never knew he was the Lone Ranger. Get on your way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Champions are made, not born. That's true. For any of us, practice makes perfect. And practice made pretty Betty Shallow, figure skating star of the Ship Sads and Johnson Ice Follies. As a little girl on figure skates, Betty practiced her figure eights. She learned to leap, to glide, to spin. And to help her on to win, she'd really spoon her Wheaties in. Now Betty whirls on flashing blade. Wheaties helped her make the grade. Sure, Betty Shallow grew up on Wheaties, started at the age of eight. Sure keeps a girl up on her toes. There's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Now watch Betty whirl away. Hey, hey, hey! She's on her way, on her way. She's on her way, on her way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Cause champions are made, not born. Yes, sir. Get on your way. Get on your way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Breakfast of champions. copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. is brought to you by General Mills every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at this same time. Be sure to listen. This recorded program has come to you from Detroit. This is ABC Radio Network.